Welcome back to our channel. In this video, let us write the Python code for a given m by n matrix to return the elements of the matrix in the spiral order. Let us consider a 3 by 3 matrix whose output we want to display is of spiral order. That is first row, last column, last row, leftmost column before going to the innermost matrix. In this order, we want to print the elements of the matrix. So, the solution or the algorithm for this is very simple and we will follow the recursion method. There are many other ways to implement the logic, but we are going to follow recursion. Uh, there are seven steps. Although there are seven steps, each step is very easy and simple to follow. First, let me define the steps before seeing the implementation in Python. First step is let us define the function which takes the matrix itself as its parameter and the size of the matrix that is row start, column start, row end and column end. These are the five parameters for the function. The second step is we will check if matrix size is valid. Since we are going to call the function recursively, we will have a check to exceed the call. And the third step is first print the top row. Next step four is to print the rightmost column. And the step five is to print the bottom row or the last row of the matrix. Step 6 is to print the left or the first column of the matrix. The step 7 or the last step is to call the function recursively by passing the 5 parameters including matrix. And now since it is a recursive function and from step 3 to 6 we have already taken out the boundary of the matrix, we will pass row start plus 1, column start plus 1 and row end minus 1, column end minus 1. That way we are coming to one boundary inside the matrix and we shall repeat the step 2 to 6 again. So now we will go for the implementation in Python. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please subscribe to our channel and give a like to the video. Let us consider first a matrix, 3 by 3 matrix. First row 1, 2, 3, second row 4, 5, 6, third row is 7, 8, 9. These are the elements of the matrix. Now let us implement all steps. The first step is to define the recursive function. Let me call the function as print spiral matrix, which shall take five parameters. The first parameter is the matrix itself. Subsequent four parameters gives the size of the matrix, which is row start, column start, row end, column end. So they are numerals. The first parameter matrix is the whole array itself. So the second step is we have to check if the matrix is within the valid range because we are going to call this function print spiral matrix recursively in last step. So the step two will help us as a exit condition. Uh, the condition that we are going to check here is if the row start is greater than the row end or the column start is greater than the column end, we shall exit or terminate this function by calling return. So this way we have an exit condition for the recursive call. Now coming to step 3 which is print the top row or the first row of the matrix. Here row is fixed that is top row. 
So, we have to change the column from column start till column end. As we use range, it will be column start and until column end minus 1. So, we will print the matrix with the row start because this is the top row and we will have P for the column and P ranges from column start to column end. Let us append a space to it. Now we will execute the step 3 by invoking the function print spiral matrix. So let me pass the matrix as its first parameter row start column start are 0. Length of the matrix gives the row size. Length of matrix of index 0 gives the column size. So now let me execute it and see the result. We got an error P is not defined. Okay, the row 31 I have to use for. It's a loop, not an if check. And we got in the terminal 1, 2, 3, which is achieved by varying the column from column start to column end and by keeping the row as fixed to row start because this is the first row. And now having implemented step 3 and verified our result, let us move on to the next step that is step 4 print right column or the last column. Here the last column or the rightmost column is having the value 3, 6, 9 but we have to print only 6 and 9. That means here row is varying, column is the fixed one. So let me start for P in range. We have to change the row string. So row start plus 1 till row end. I am starting from next row because the first row value is already covered in step 3. So P in range of row start plus 1 continue till row end and matrix of P and column end minus 1. Column end because it is the last column. Column end minus 1 is the index which gives the last column as the index for the matrix. Now step 4 along with step 3 let us execute it and check for the results. We are expecting the result as 1, 2, 3, 6, 9. This we got as expected and note it down we are not repeating 3 although it is part of the last column because we are starting the row only from the row start plus 1. Okay. Next moving on to step 5 which is print the bottom row or the last row. As now we can understand the last row means row is fixed but column is changing. Here one thing to be noted is the column value for the last bottom row should be read from right to left. So for P in range of column end minus 2 because we have to start from rightmost end column end minus 2 because the last column is already taken care in step 4 and we will continue until column start minus 1 and since it is from right to left we have to decrement the column so hence minus 1. Now this is the last row hence matrix of row end minus 1 which gives the last row as the index to the matrix and the column is varying as provided by P. On executing it we got our expected result from the matrix. 1, 2, 3 is the first row. 6 and 9 is the right column. And 8 and 7. See, we are, we are reading from right to the left. Is the step 5 that prints the bottom row. 
so now moving on to step 6 we have to print the left column the only value left out here is value 6 on the left which is the middle row so now print the left column as we understand here the column is fixed so row is the varying one which range from row end minus 2 to row start because we have to move from bottom of the matrix to the top as we did in step 5 here row is from red from bottom to top now print matrix of p where row is varying and column start positions executing once again we got the result which is 1 2 3 6 9 8 7 and 4 so with step 6 we have covered the four sides of the matrix in the clockwise direction now step 7 or the last step is to call the function recursively now while calling the function we should pass the parameter in such a way that it removes this outer boundary or it moves one step inside the matrix so we have to call row start plus one column start plus one and row end minus one column end minus one so with these things the spiral matrix gets called again to print the values spirally now we got all the values 1 2 3 6 9 8 7 4 5 now this is the outcome of 3 by 3 matrix now let us take a rectangle matrix of 3 rows and 4 columns the value taken is 1 to 12 in 3 rows and 4 columns first let me execute this with the logic that we have made and see the output we can see the first row 1 2 3 4 last column 8 12 bottom row 11 10 9 then 5 6 7 are printed and again a 6 is coming up which is a redundant one this is because we are not checking when we go to the inner boundary if a rollover is happening so in step 5 let me check if the last row is not same as the first row so that rollover can be avoided only if they are not same we will proceed to print it so let me do a check if row of end minus one is not same as the row start if it is a valid condition then we will go for the for loop to print that bottom row similarly in step 6 let me add a condition to check the last column is not same as the first column so if column n minus 1 is not equal to column start we will proceed with for loop to print the leftmost column in this way we can avoid the rollover of the matrix so now let me execute it and cross verify with the rectangle matrix we got 1 2 3 4 first row 8 12 the last column 11 10 9 the last row or the bottom row 5 uh, the left column 6 7 is the innermost one which is achieved by calling recursively 
so this is the logic to implement m by n matrix of any size that shall return all elements of the matrix in spiral order please give a like and share with your friends don't forget to subscribe to our channel